Good afternoon, everyone. This is Macromatic here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 9th, 2020, recorded on 2.52 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a look out here in the Eastern Pacific Basin, we have a newly formed tropical storm that formed this morning. This is looking pretty healthy. Got some pretty good banding structures already and a partial mid-level eye trying to develop already, suggesting that this is going to try to quickly intensify as it generally moves off towards the west northwest but you can see here some dry stable air and cooler waters out in this part of the world right here to the south and west of the of the Cabo San Lucas resort areas uh, the biggest threat right now for portions of coastal mexico is mainly going to be the rainfall from these far outer bands uh, some interesting feature here kind of a so loosely uh, tied within a tropical disturbance that's also going to bring some pretty heavy rainfall to portions of the Mexican coastline here. But in terms of general impacts and uh, any landfall potential, we're not going to really see that. The Cabo San Lucas Resort area is the, the best uh, threat for you guys. will probably be some higher surf conditions. And the, here's the track here. For this tropical storm, as it continues to head off towards the west-northwest, you're expected to become a hurricane by tomorrow morning and then continue on its west-northwesterly track before turning off towards the east and eventually or to the west and then kind of eventually towards the southwest here but again the biggest uh, concerns right now for the Cabo San Lucas resort areas in the uh, coast here of Mexico is generally going to be the heavier uh, rainfall in some of the outer bands from Mexico and also some of that rough surf conditions expected over the next few days or so as this is likely going to push out some surf conditions ahead of the storm here. And in the Atlantic Basin, we are taking a look here at Invest Area 95L now with a 50% chance of development over the next five days or so. This is now uh, generally towards the west-southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands right here, moving towards the west and then eventually northwest here over the next few days or so. Right now for the islands, this does not look like a problem uh, at all. This looks like mainly uh, this will probably come into this area and eventually weaken and dissipate in here. We'll take a look at why that is here in a couple of minutes. Uh, but for right now, we are watching the, the development chances kind of gradually increase throughout the day and we'll continue to monitor how that goes but again for the islands no immediate concern at this current time if you look here at the visible satellite imagery from the College of DuPage Cod Meteorology uh, site here, we'll take this uh, back to the very beginning here. You notice that all of this dry, stable air to the north is a significant inhibitor, but you notice how this seems to be trying to kind of wrap itself in a little bit of a uh, convective moisture bubble. And this has kind of survived pretty well throughout the uh, diurnal minimum today, basically if you're uh, unfamiliar with that. It's just a, a, the diurnal minimum is basically where the atmosphere is at its worst time to have convection, a deep convection develop. Uh, and if you do get deep convection to develop, it usually does not sustain itself for that long. Uh, but we have seen some pretty deep convection try to kind of establish itself throughout the day during the diurnal minimum. This has kind of helped to uh, possibly tighten the circulation up a little bit more. Uh, we'll be very curious to see another uh, scatterometer pass through here uh, to kind of see how this circulation has uh, kind of evolved uh, throughout the last about uh, 12 hours or so. But again, uh, from earlier this morning, the circulation was pretty elongated and it still looks pretty elongated now. And another limiting factor here is if we take a look here at the Ghost uh, 16, this is the mid-level water vapor here. And the blues and greens are higher moisture areas and your yellows are your um, dry air, uh, your drier air in the atmosphere. And you can kind of see how this is our broad system right here. You got these tropical waves coming off of Africa, pretty broad system here. But you notice what's kind of looking off to the north. Certainly a lot of this dry air to the north is getting entrained into this system and um, you know from time to time it's tried to kind of nudge itself in. Now so far we've kind of had a insulated moisture bubble and this kind of happened in the early stages of Gonzalo how there was dry air to the north here and a relative moist pocket right near the system but that dry air eventually won out as we started to get some southwesterly shear you of course know how that kind of uh, turned out to be for the islands there that it uh, weakened it considerably right before the islands but 
In this situation, we don't necessarily have a lot of shear screaming across this area. The shear values are relatively light right now and that might be helping to keep this dry air kind of just enough abated to the north where we can get a relatively good moisture pocket now one of the things is is that if we do get any sort of dry air entrainments into this uh, circulation here and inevitably there will be some because a counterclockwise circulation uh, brings uh, obviously goes counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere that will bring in some of this dry air and that might get mixed into the circulation from to, from time to time and if it does not have a well-established core, an inner core by that by that time, which in all likelihood it won't, uh, that could be very detrimental for the storm environment itself and cause a collapse of the deep convection. So that's something we really have to look out for uh, over the next about 12 to 24 hours or so as this tries to undergo tropical cyclogenesis. Now, one thing we can take a look at here is the 850 millibar relative vorticity product. And again, your reds and whites are your higher cyclonic spin at about 8,000 uh, 8, 8, feet in the atmosphere, or sorry, 5,000 feet in the atmosphere, rather. And you can see where our disturbance is right now. Pretty good uh, envelope of vorticity with it. We have a general area of cyclonic turning in the atmosphere, again, south-southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands here. And this does look to try to be gaining some of its organization here. Again, it's a pretty decent vorticity signature right now. This is kind of the remnants of our other system that we were tracking the other day. That's uh, that's the uh, previous invest area, 94L, which is not a invest anymore. Uh, but that's kind of the remnant circulation with that. That's our tropical storm down there. But again, you can kind of see how we have a pretty well enveloped area of vorticity in the atmosphere. And that helps to kind of bundle some of this energy together down here. This helps to kind of consolidate a general area and we kind of leave it up to convective processes uh, to kind of continue the rest of that. So as this deep convection, assuming it kind of, assuming we continue to have this deep convection persist, it will help to tighten up the circulation and possibly undergo tropical cyclogenesis here. Now, what we're looking at here is for any uh, reason to kind of doubt the system or anything maybe going uh, for the system as well. And this is the CDAS uh, sea surface temperatures coming from tropicaltippets.com. This is the uh, 06Z or the 2 o'clock initialization point. This is the Cabo Verde Islands right here. Our system is located right here about. And you notice how we have a, a pretty decent area of uh, of uh, sea surface temperatures across this area with about 27 to 28 degrees celsius that's certainly plenty of feel for this tropical wave and again uh, the further west you go you get into the higher sea surface temperatures but also a little bit more of an unfavorable environment out in this region currently and we'll kind of explain why here in just a moment the rest of the Western Atlantic and Tropical Atlantic Basin water temperatures running about 29 to 30 Celsius, so very warm out through here, and will certainly be very warm as we head closer to the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season. So what's our upper ocean heat content looking like? Well, to go over this pretty briefly, again, uh, for you folks that don't know what this product is, this is basically uh, telling us the, uh, the water, how much of the 80 degree isotherm goes down into the water, how much uh, ocean content depth do these tropical cyclones have to work with before they upwell cool water. And again, these reds, yellows, greens, oranges, these are pretty indicative of your higher upper ocean heat content values, which and, and is also another byproduct of allowing more latent heat release potential in the atmosphere for these tropical cyclones to kind of ge keep generating new convection. And it just kind of is a positive feedback loop. Uh, but again, the upper ocean heat content, even out here in the tropical Atlantic, has a pretty sufficient amount, especially where our tropical uh, or tropical disturbance is right here. It's located in an area of pretty decent upper ocean heat content values. It's certainly not anything like over here in the Caribbean, which these numbers, I I'm just telling you that that is a concerning high number. Uh, if you get something to come into this environment and you have a favorable shear environment and everything else, I'm just saying storms will tend to intensify pretty quick across that area. 
And certainly we're going to have to keep an eye on if any tropical cyclones do make it into this environment uh, to see how to see what the conditions are there. But again, in general sense, where our tropical disturbances right now, pretty decent upper ocean heat content tracking into an area of higher uh, upper ocean heat content over the next few days or so. But dry air and shear is going to end up kind of killing the system off. Which we can take a look at that vis a visual representation here in the GFS 850 millibar of vorticity product coming from tropicaltibbets.com. This is valid as of 2 p.m. this afternoon, so just about an hour ago. You kind of notice how we have these two little areas here of vorticity, but you notice how that kind of de develops into a tropical de uh, tropical storm or depression here. Uh, within really the next 18 hours or so, it really tries to bundle that energy in the atmosphere. We have a more concentrated bundling effect, and that is certainly something that we really have to start paying attention to. And then the GFS eventually makes us a tropical wave or a tropical depression or whatever, uh, even throughout the next about five days or so before finally killing this off west of the islands, another tropical wave back here. Now, what could be possibly killing this system off? Well, this is the 700 to 400 millibar relative uh, humidity product here. And again, what you're really looking for is the uh, greens in here. This is your higher moisture content in the atmosphere and all of these browns are dry, stable, mid-level air. And we can kind of see here throughout the next 48 hours or so, right now, if we kind of back this up now, again, this is uh, by early tonight, you have a fairly well-developed uh, kind of moisture pocket enveloped within this. Now, we fast forward this to 48 hours, notice how things have started to change a little bit. First of all, we're getting some, uh, we're getting some of this dry air coming from around the backside of the cyclone. And again, this counterclockwise flow is kind of bringing this and kind of streaming it around and into, uh, potentially into the core of the system. So by hour 48, we don't have a relatively organized tropical cyclone at the moment a very significant dry air plume to the north that's kind of just pushing down on this and you can kind of see what happens now the moisture axis down here to the south starts to cut off and we get our from the intertropical convergence zone which is right about in this region we get our own little tropical wave or tropical cyclone at this time this is by uh wednesday morning by very early wednesday morning but notice all this dry stable air kind of lurking kind of pushing down and rushing out in, in front of the storm so this really uh limits much intensification process and then eventually we can kind of see what happens by 90 hours from now by uh early thursday morning we get another blast of dry air coming from the back side of the system and as another dry air surge is kind of uh, kind of pushing into this. This will also increase some of the shear around this area. There's a tropical uh, tropical feature up here, kind of this big uh, anticyclonic system up here. And you can kind of see that this anticyclonic system with the upper level winds here, the, what we call a TUTT, a T-U-T-T. And again, what that tends to do, that's going to increase the shear environment out here, which also is a better environment for this dry air to get wrapped around into the cyclone because now all this dry air is basically being pushed into the center of circulation. And eventually it just kind of cuts this off here by 120 hours, really no longer a tropical disturbance, a lot of dry mid-level air kind of coming through this area. And again, it's just going to be a very unfavorable pattern. And the European here is pretty reluctant on even developing this. You know, you don't even see, I mean, you know, here's our tropical disturbance right here and you don't even see it. I mean, out here to hour 72, you see almost no features associated with the tropical wave out in this region at all. There's literally nothing out in this region to look at. And even out here to the next about five days or so, I mean, you just don't have anything really even going on out here at all. So, you know, it's a lot depends on the, the next couple of hours, really, how it survives through the rest of the diurnal minimum and then during the convective maximum period tonight that should allow for some uh, deeper convection to kind of fire 
near and around the center or, you know, whatever center there is and help to kind of lower the pressures and, you know, all the positive feedback loops that kind of happen. So a lot is going to depend on if this dry air too gets entrained into the center of circulation. That is really going to be the key here uh, over the next couple of days as to whether or not that dry air gets wrapped around because if it does basically the tropical cyclone genesis chances go it, it just goes way down from there so we'll have to watch this again no real threat to the islands at this current time uh, we do have a tropical storm out here in the eastern pacific no threats to this area at all either uh, really other than some surf conditions so that is still a threat so you do have to take that seriously but uh, we're not expecting any direct landfalls from that. And in the Atlantic Basin, of course, for the islands, you need to keep an eye on this thing, but not really expecting much in the way uh, of significant organization and intensification. Certainly not at this time expecting this to be a threat for any of the island chain at all. All right. Well, that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Don't forget, I am on Twitter at micromally one and I will be releasing the Hurricane uh, Isaias data collection later this evening. Probably around 9 or 10 p.m. Eastern Time is when I'll be releasing it to the public. All right. If not, I will be releasing it tomorrow. I still got to do some fin fin oh, excuse me, finalizing on it and some finishing touches. But other than that, should be good to go. All right. Hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. I am Michael Romali. I'll see you guys back here tomorrow afternoon. Stay safe, everyone. Talk to you later.